Hey nerds, welcome to Flash, Theories and Conspiracies. So this was our mid-season finale, and this was a, a really solid episode. I really enjoyed this one. Um, we really got to learn more about DeVoe's plan, and r at least the first half of his plan. I think that was uh, kind of a key um, aspect of it. And um, we also got some, uh, some, some answers on one of the theories we had and uh, some clarification as to what it actually was. So first, DeVoe's initial plan was he did want to switch bodies with someone. I was guessing it was Barry, but it wasn't. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if the whole reason he had Barry there was kind of a red herring, um, but I'm sure we'll figure that out more later. But he wanted to switch bodies actually with the telepathic mutant or mutant uh, metahuman uh, Dominic Lance that uh, was being worked on by Caitlin. Um, I actually really liked the explanation they gave for why it had to be him, that because of his meta-human abilities, the kind of telepathic mind powers, it, wa it, it was uh, compatible. Um, that I really liked. Uh, it wasn't just, I can pick anyone and I want Barry because his speed force or whatever. Um, I did think they were gonna try and explain something that his connection to the speed force would prevent the body from breaking down but maybe that's what they're saying with the uh, metahuman, with Dominic's uh, telepathic abilities, that that is going to prevent the breakdown of the body. Um, either way, I think that was really cool that we got to see that play out um, and we saw that happen. Now, Dominic Lance himself, Brainstorm, as Cisco calls him, he is from the comics and he's a villain in the comics. He's actually a villain of Mr. Terrific. And initially, I thought this is probably just a throwaway character. They needed a telepath. Um, or they wanted a character with mental abilities, and he's actually a character from DC, and he's got a connection to the Arrowverse, more or less, because of Mr. Terrific from the comics, but um, his powers are, he's super, super intelligent, and he can copy the intelligence of other people into his brain, so basically he just gets smarter the more he's around people. Um, and the other thing is he can, ha he has limited mind control abilities, um, so he can control the minds of other people, uh, it typically ends in their death, um, so it's not like true mind control um, that you know, will be widely used. But So those are the powers that, that Dominic Lance's character has from the comics. Now again, I thought this was um, initially just kind of a throwaway character, but then there's a quote from this character that is really telling, and, and it might be that not only did they use this character for the body, but they used him as an inspiration for DeVoe's plan, and this quote let me read it to you. It says, soon I'll have the ability to feed on a mass scale simultaneously. Now that's food for thought. As many acumen continues, as my acumen continues to multiply, I move one step closer to the all mind. Then creation will have a new intellectual God to worship me. Um, DeVoe keeps talking about educating everyone, but you know, kind of teaching everyone. Um, if he is this He's building himself to be this ultimate source of knowledge. Um, this seems like this could be what he's doing. He's making himself into an all-knowing God that everyone comes to and has to bow down at the altar of DeVoe. So that is, um, it's interesting and it's very possible that is the direction they're going with the character. Now, Amonette Black made her return this week and she was, she was terrible this week. I really, uh, she had such potential the first time we saw her. She, I felt like she was really good. And this week, she just felt really weak. Um, and she's still walking around with her giant duffel bag of metal shards. Um, th I really wish they would incorporate that into her costume somehow. Because this the, the bag of shards is just ridiculous. Um, we did get her background story. And that was, that was neat. That was interesting. There was good stuff there. Um, but it was just... It, she, she wasn't good this episode, so next time she comes back out, um, she really, I think they really need to up the game with her. Um, Ralph. Ralph, uh, you know, his, he's really starting to bond with the team. It's great. Uh, the moment where he's complaining to Cisco that he doesn't have a code name yet, 
he will get his code name. Um, maybe he'll come up with it, something like that. But I think it will happen about the same time that he gets his actual costume. And I think that is um, what it's going to be kind of a, a very ceremonious thing that he's now really officially a part of the team. He's got his costume, he's got his uh, code name, and he's really going to be out there helping fight crime. He's no longer a trainee on the team, as it were. So that uh, I expect that definitely before the season ends. And the last thing I just want to say, uh, DeVoe's framing of Barry was beautiful. The entire season building to this, getting Barry so paranoid and upset at DeVoe, the restraining order, all of that leading to, it just, it's implausible that Barry didn't do this. Like, it just makes so much sense because Barry was obsessed with DeVoe. It's, it's a beautiful and beautifully executed plan. Um, so I got to give the writers credit for that. It was so great. And I'm, you know, looking forward to seeing what happens, what the fallout is. We know J Barry's going to be in jail next uh, episode. We've seen that in the, the teaser pictures and the teaser image and the trailers. So I'm excited. What did you guys think of this episode? What did you guys think of everything so far in this season of Flash? Leave your comments down below and don't forget to check out my other theories. There's Supergirl and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is back. So until next time, guys, I'm Brian from Good Nerd, Bad Nerd, and this has been Flash, Theories, and Conspiracies.